Hi, I'm Charlotte and this is Bookish Mama Blooms. So, I'm here today to talk about what I've been reading for the last month. I think it's been a month since I've done any kind of vlogging. And half the reason why that is, is because it's been a rubbish month for reading. I've had like spurts where I've read a book in like two days. And then I've spent two weeks just like either dragging myself through something or picking up something and putting it down, picking up something else and putting it down. Um, I think part of the reason was I read such a good book at the start. It was either the start of March or the end of February. Um, and that was Savage Appetites by Rachel Monroe. True stories of women crime and obsession. Everything I wanted this book to do, it just did it. It was amazing. So it's separated into four sections. Um, detective, so women that become so obsessed with crime that they end up sort of following the line of either trying to solve a crime that's been unsolved or um, helping, you know, turn, go, becoming a criminal investigator of some kind. Uh, victim, so people who become obsessed um, with the victims in the crimes and almost over identify with them and almost try and sort of become them um, almost like in a reborn kind of way. Uh, defender, so people who end up marrying people who are convicted of murder would be an example. And killers, uh, so rarer, but women that then go on to kill because they're obsessed with crime. And the reason why she chooses women is because women are more obsessed with um, true crime in popular culture than men. So TV, books, um, films, um, the crime channels, they're watched by an extraordinary proportion of women which is very interesting so she spends a lot of time asking and she herself is really interested in crime um she spends a lot of her time asking why is that like that uh why is it that women who are so often the victims of crime are interested in almost all the gory details and she questions herself a lot about why she is interested um it feels voyeuristic it's it makes her feel ill at times that she's watched certain things and gotten what she can only describe as a pleasure out of viewing them. And she wants to know, is it because I want to sort of know my enemy or is it something a little bit less appetising than that? Fascinating. Loved it. Um, then, I feel like I've read something else. But I can't think what it is right now. So that might have to appear in the other blog. Um, then, as, as far as I know, I read, um, I started to read Gay Bar, Why We Went Out by Jer Jeremy Appleton Lynn. The cover of this book is amazing. I hope that's in focus. Um, this is where I'm at. Can you see I'm halfway? And it, I'm gonna DNF it. I love the premise and I love the social history and I normally like it when people combine their own stories with the telling of social history. Um, so that's what it was. It was Jeremy, Atherton, Lynn going out into various gay bars across the world and telling you their history as he sort of goes about telling you his history and his um, the way that he dealt with coming out as a gay man and the experiences that he had. So there's places like the Factory, which is in London. Um, there's the Adelphi. Is the Adelphi in London? Oh no, the Factory isn't in London. What am I on about? The Factory is in Los Angeles and the Adelphi is in London. Sorry. Um, yeah, and then San Francisco is the Windows, I think. Um, I can't really 100% put my finger on what I didn't like. I, I just think maybe it was just the writing style. I just, me and Sean talked about it because Sean has read it and she didn't 100% love it either. She didn't dislike it and she did continue with it. Um, we kind of wondered whether it was, was the way that he was combining his personal stories with the history that just didn't work. I don't, I honestly couldn't tell you. Sometimes there's just no reason and maybe it was just the wrong time for me, but one thing that was really interesting was the way he talked very candidly about the toxic masculinity in the earlier clubs. Um, so he's going back to like, um, I think the 70s and 80s was where he starts to talk about when the guys were going in wearing leather and like the leather caps and everybody looked the same. And he documents what it was like 
going in there and he says that because the men going there were gay they had to almost it was prescribed in that culture to be extra masculine to almost compensate for the fact that that you were gay and because there were no women in these spaces i think women sometimes whether we do it on purpose or not i don't know how it really happens we kind of moderate masculinity you know there's like a give and take um men men in a group with themselves will talk differently if a woman sits down at the table whether that's right or wrong that's not what i'm saying and obviously i'm discussing this in wildly binary terms which i know is not what i believe in but i think that's often how society conducts itself so he says that that in these spaces it was i mean when he describes it i am just my jaw was on the floor basically um so many of the encounters that he has as well so this is later um in like the late 80s and 90s i like borderline I was like is there consent going on in this exchange I didn't feel like there was and he didn't say that there wasn't but certainly it wasn't something that I could relate to in any way um and I couldn't work out whether he wanted to do some of the things that he was doing yeah I don't know so I'm I'm looking at myself now and thinking well just because it's not something you're interested in does that mean that you shouldn't like the book does that mean that you shouldn't read it no obviously but it was there was so much kind of uber masculinity going on especially in the early bits that it kind of it just it's just not up my street <laughs> basically um whether it's part of gay culture or straight culture toxic masculinity is just a bit grim to me and and he kind of makes out this grim as well um he's not sort of loving it some of the time it was a difficult one because when I when I don't like some sometimes when I don't like books I kind of think okay is this you is this your deal so maybe I just need to do a little bit more educating myself and then I'll come around to it and enjoy it a bit more um, I can't really work it out but I think it's good to ask why I think that's the important thing um, then I tried to write a, to read sorry now I've been at that I tried to read a different book The Pink Line The World's Queer Frontiers and that started off great I got about four oh, six pages in oh but the, the other pages aren't numbered so maybe 15 pages in but i just couldn't settle i think my mind maybe because my birthday was, there's a lot of stuff going on and i was doing more social stuff than i would ever normally do also because of my long covid i was really worried about pushing myself too much so i was trying to do lots of downtime in between the social engagements i think because of that i kind of needed to maybe not read and i'm not good at not reading i kind of feel like i have to be reading all the time so i haven't dnf this at all but it's just one of the i'm just giving you an example of how when you're just restless sometimes you can't settle even on a book that's kind of made for you so i'm definitely going to come back to this it started off really good and i like the writing uh, i've also been to the in and out of frida carlo um this is the tashin book there are loads of books that i've got about her about her paintings this is a really nice early guide if you haven't already um, familiarised yourself with her work or her life. Um, I think they're quite cheap. This says four ninety nine, but I bought this a very long time ago, so I doubt they're that price now. There is a great documentary on the BBC. It's a three part series. I think it was made a while ago, um, but it's really really good, and it sort of discusses her life and her works and some of the struggles that she had. And she's just such an amazing, inspirational person. So I would thoroughly recommend that. This is sort of like, I tend to sort of change what's on the coffee table so that I can look at different books when I'm just not in a quiet space to be able to read, but I can flick through. And this is the new coffee table book. And then the one that I have really gotten into that seems to have broken the slump, but we don't want to say that too early, is um, Chaos, The Truth Behind the Manson Murders. So I've done a book haul about this and I did briefly discuss it, but basically Tom O'Neill is questioning the narrative that we sort of considered the true reasoning behind the Manson murders which initially felt random but then during the trial the prosecutor what's his name Berg I can't say his name Bergolosi that is a really bad version of Bugliosi is that right I don't know um he presented a fairly kind of airtight narrative of why they happened 
and his book, which is the famous book about the Manson family, Helter Skelter, um, documents this idea of Manson wanting to start a race war and everything kind of fits around that and I think when you're a prosecutor your case has to be tight because otherwise you know the jury might be in doubt and then you're the person that you're trying to prosecute gets away with it scot-free but I just don't think that life is ever as simple as that and certainly Tom O'Neill kind of is suggesting at the start anyway that there is a bigger conspiracy at hand and that actually the truth will one day come out so I don't know if he I don't know where he gets to in this truth is it in this book or is he just going to hint at it? I don't know. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's gripping me. And, and it's not too gory so far. I mean, it's horrible and it's traumatising. And definitely do not read it um, if you're pregnant. I would say it would be like the worst time ever to read something like this. But, um, or if you've experienced violence of any kind, stay well clear. But for me, this is kind of, uh, it's a bit like what she's talking about in this scene. Rachel Monroe. Why am I compelled to read it? I don't know. But it is gripping me and his writing is great as well. I was a bit worried because loads of true crime is it just comes off a bit tacky and you worry that it's going to be kind of tabloidy journalism, but it's it's not. It's so far it's really well written. There you go. 11 minutes. Um let me know what you're reading. I think loads of you are in a slump. Like we all I tend to follow loads of you online as well. Um, and we chit chat and I feel like there's been lots of reading slumps I think maybe the Christmas January rush of all these new books and then you're just like oh also there's loads to do like there's gardening stuff to do it's just loads of stuff to do I don't feel like I ever have the time to do anything in completion I just feel like I just do bits of everything and never actually finish a job so there we go. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now and I'm going to go film something else because I'm going to try and film three videos in one day today. That is my plan. Don't know whether it will work. Um, I hope you're all well and I will speak to you soon.